on this Thanksgiving weekend, I know that this can be a tough time for many when it comes to their finances. You have to travel to visit family, have huge festivities, and obviously presents for Christmas. Don't forget Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and every other holiday, quote unquote, that's out there that's going to steal your money. All this can begin to make you question where you are in your financial journey. In today's episode, I want to equip you with three ways that you can be thankful for your personal finances, no matter where you currently are with them. If you will begin to apply one or maybe even all three of these, you will be equipped to stay in the right mindset to stay thankful for everything this Thanksgiving weekend. Let's jump in. Welcome to the Financial Mirror. Financial Mirror where future success is reflected in our knowledge of fixing the one thing we can control ourselves. Thank you for joining me today on the financial mirror as we continue to improve the one thing you can control yourself. If this is the first time you are joining in, don't forget to hit subscribe on YouTube to be notified of all the new episodes as they release. If you are listening to this on a podcast platform of your choice, don't forget to leave a five-star review. Five stars, please. And a written comment. All of those go a long way and getting this information out to more and more listeners. I want to start off by saying this. I hope that you have had a great Thanksgiving. Hopefully you got a little time to spend away with your family. I know that uh, in Alabama, the Iron Bowl is a huge part of Thanksgiving. The great part is that you get to be with your family prior to the solution of the Iron Bowl. If you have never really been caught up in football, maybe college football is not your thing, maybe sports in general is not your thing, you probably have never heard of the Iron Bowl. But if you have, or if you haven't, go take a look at it. It's it's a pretty big thing in Alabama, so uh, that's, a, that's one thing. Uh, we were able to fly in and go to the game this year uh, where Alabama goes against Auburn in Tuscaloosa this year. And if you have listened to this show for any amount of time, you know that I am a huge Alabama fan. uh, And in Alabama, this is obviously a big thing. Now, we also obviously got to spend some time with family in Alabama, which is always a great thing to ever get to spend time with family. That's always a phenomenal thing. And you don't really want to miss that. Uh, But as you know, with with Thanksgiving, with all of these things happening, uh, Black Friday, all everything. Uh, the hardest part of Thanksgiving out of all of that is that there is so much food and no matter how hard you try, you just stuff yourself all the way to the brim. And maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm the only one out there that just can't say no on Thanksgiving. Like you want to try a little bit of this and a little bit of that and everybody brings their all time best and you have to try it, right? Like and then, oh, don't forget the dessert table. You got the dessert table you need to go hit up. Like it's it's just an amazing time to go spend with family, eat with family, have a great time with family. It's truthfully uh, one of the greatest times of the year. Uh, it it seconds me to Christmas. Christmas is, is my favorite time, but uh, it except for Christmas music. And we can talk more about it later. I'm just not a fan of Christmas music. And it's it's a long story, but maybe we'll talk about that at Christmas time. But Thanksgiving is great. All the food is great. Uh, and it's it's a great time of the year. The weather is finally starting to change in almost all parts of the United States, which is, you know, getting us all in the same cold level. Uh, we, as you know, we had a wedding and I said to all my all my friends and family, you took the hot weather with you when you left. We hadn't seen 40 degrees since. We saw 40 at the wedding, but after the wedding, we hadn't touched 40 degrees. It's been it's been freezing here. We're in the teens in the morning and uh, low 30s, mid 30s in the afternoon. It's just it's something. But anyways, uh, I hope you as well as me got a great Thanksgiving this year. And sticking to this whole entire thing, I thought what better way 
than to really bring thankfulness to our finances. So I want to stick to the trend of being thankful. I thought that as we come to the end of the year, it would be good just to give a little more uh, motivation to finances. A lot of people at this time are in that skepticism where they're just, they're not really sure of their finances. They uh, they they maybe have, have overspent in certain categories. Uh, maybe Thanksgiving, it, it, it could easily be a, a, a lot of people, it's a little more down of a time of the year, right? Um, with all that being said, you know, just that, that, that mindset, just that down mindset can make people start to think about maybe some of the, the not so good parts of their finances with all of that. I want you to know that I want to bring you a little motivation and that's what this episode is about. I want to show you how you can be thankful for your finances. And I truthfully mean this. I mean, this does not just apply to those that are are on the right on the right path for their financial journey. They're doing exactly what they want to do financially. If that's you, this applies to you. If maybe you've gotten a little off course over the past day, the past week, the past month, or maybe the past year or two, this episode applies to you. I just want you to be thankful for wherever you're at we want to be thankful for what's gotten us there and how we can improve, right? That's what I want us to look at. So for for many, this time of the year can be stressful, and I understand that. But for the simple fact that this is a time of thankfulness, I want to bring positivity into your Thanksgiving weekend, into your Thanksgiving week, whatever that looks like for you. Now, no matter what, it could seem like stress begins to rise a little bit more and more that you're thinking about money or how much you're going to be spending over the next month or whatever the case may be. Calm down, relax, listen to this episode. I want you to keep this in mind. I want you to be motivated. I want you to start to look at new ways, set new goals, focus on what you want to accomplish with your finances and stay positive. Now, the question is, are you motivated? And and that's what I want to address because this time of the year, it also gives you the chance to be thankful no matter where you are in not just finances, no matter where you are in life. This time of the year gives you a chance to be thankful and it's a huge opportunity. Uh, As we go into the new year, you know, people will take that time to set, set new resolutions, new ways of life. But right now, let's really be in this moment of thankfulness. Uh, When we think about finances, we can begin to think where we currently are and forget where we once were, right? That's very common, not just with finances, but in life, this is common because to be honest, financial goals are not like losing five pounds, right? Like if you set a goal to lose five pounds, there's a good chance that you're at or close to your goal in a month, right? Financial goals aren't like that. Many financial goals take you months. Some take you years to accomplish, right? So we have to we have to think about that. Think about debt, for instance. For debt, for a lot of a lot of clients that I work with that are getting out of debt, I tell them, as long as it took you to get into debt is kind of how long you can expect it to take you to get out. Sometimes longer, but the good part is, is is that you can accomplish it, right? But you you have to remember that financial goals are not like other goals. Losing five pounds and saving five months toward your emergency fund, they're not equal. <laughs> the amount of time it takes to accomplish it is not equal. One's going to take you possibly 30 days. One's going to take you possibly six or eight months, right? Like, if not longer. So, They're not all the same, but the key is to stay thankful for all the hard work that you're doing, what you've done and what you're going to do, because that is what makes all of this worth it. What I want you to walk away with today is just a little bit of confidence. I want you to walk away knowing that you will be successful financially. Just do these three simple things and I promise you, you will be much more thankful for where you are financially right now at the end of this episode. Let's jump in. The first thing that I want us to look at to to really understand and and begin this, this thankful process is we have to track our progress. 
If you want to be thankful for your finances, you've got to track your progress. And why is that? And I'm sure that's a big question. Well, I, I, why do I have to track my progress? That's silly. Like, I just want to be thankful, dude. Just tell me how to be thankful. Listen, track your progress. The biggest reason is that you are constantly doing little things that are paying dividends in your personal finances. Think about you, you're losing. I want to use the five pound example again. All along the way, you're doing little things to lose five pounds, whether that be you went from exercising one day a week to five days a week or three days a week or whatever. You started watching what you eat. You cut your carbs, you cut your sugars, you cut your whatever, like whatever new fad diets out there. You you did your 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 fasting or whatever. Focus on the little things. Finances is no different. You focus on it with the five pounds. Finances are no different. Focus on all those little things. You you. Uh, maybe this could be something as you, you stopped eating out as much, you cut back from eating out five days a week to once a week. Maybe you're now only buying Starbucks once a week versus every day of the week, right? Those are little improvements. You've got to track your progress so that you can see that, right? That's how you can be thankful for it at the end of the month. Uh, maybe you're no longer going to the movies every weekend and you're watching movies at home, right? I don't know what, what, your financial goals look like. But what I can tell you is you're doing things right this moment that are paying dividends towards that financial goal. If if you're making a conscious effort, you are doing little things. And the problem is, is that many don't track progress. And that leads them to be extremely unthankful for all those little changes they made, right? Because they wanted this end goal. They wanted five months in their emergency fund, five months of expenses in their emergency fund. And all of a sudden, they don't have it. And it's been 30 days or it's been 60 days or it's been, you know, 90, three months, right? And they don't see it. It's just not there. But that doesn't mean they haven't made progress, right? So to really be thankful, you've got to look at those little steps that you're taking, right? You're taking those little steps. And when you you track that, you will start to notice that you are getting closer to that goal. An easy way to complete this is just look back at your budget, add up how much you've spent over the first month of of doing whatever it is, buying coffee. How much did you how much did you spend in uh, last month in coffee? At the end of last month, you said, you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy coffee as much. I'm not gonna buy coffee at Starbucks every day of the week any longer. How much did you spend then? And then look at this month's budget and how much have you spent and just just look at the difference that could surprise you and how much you've actually saved, how much you're actually by doing that, you've been able to contribute to that emergency fund or you've been able to contribute to that debt or you've been able to contribute to that investment, whatever it is, there is a change. And if you'll add that up, you will totally be surprised. I'm telling you, you'll be surprised if you've been making those. But this little simple practice, this can help you feel a little more gratified for doing those little things, right? Like this could be it. And do you know what else it might do besides give you that thankfulness, besides giving you that gratification? It might motivate you to go to Starbucks every other week, once a week, because you'll look at it and you'll be like, well, I've only saved 30 bucks in the past, in the past, whatever. Maybe I could in the past week, maybe I could up that. I could go every, you know, once every whatever, I could go 40 or 50 or 60 bucks in this time frame. That's a good way to think about it. Um, if you if you just are able to conceptualize it and say, you know what, I'm looking at it and I think I think I could do better than that. I think I could do better than once a week. I think I could do once every two weeks or once every three weeks or once a month, even, right? It might just motivate you to do a little more because you just want to see that extra money saved. Like you're like, oh, I got more money, baby. Here we go. Like this is really working. These little steps are happening. But it all started with tracking your progress, track your progress. And that is how you will first off be thankful. Second, this follows right on with it. You've got to keep score of the wins that you've got. You've got to keep score. This means that you need to not just play this game of finances. You need to keep score doing it, right? Like what if we watched a game on TV? Football, baseball, basketball players, they all just love, they love the game, right? 
But what if they got up there and they were like, like I went to the Iron Bowl and all of a sudden they came out and they're like, yep, you know, we're going, we're just going to play. We're not going to keep score. Like we don't really care who wins. Um, that's not as entertaining. <laughs> if I'm totally honest, like that's not as entertaining. Like I want to see my team win. The other team wants to see their team win. So if you are not keeping score, it's kind of hard to be thankful, right? It's kind of hard to be thankful for how good my team is if we're not even keeping score. I don't even know how many wins we have this year, right? That's not a good way to think about it. So you probably think I was going to go through this whole thing without talking about budgets, but guess what? I talked about budgets in tracking your progress, and I'm talking about budgets here and keeping your score because guess what? Your budget is how you keep score. Here, I want to give you a, a, a list of changes that you know you're trying to make in your personal finances, right? Uh, if you, after you make this list, I want you to keep track of how many times you completed it successfully, right? This could be your budget list. Like you'd say, this is my budget. Was I able to, to, to complete it successfully, right? Was I able to do it successfully? And maybe you were, or maybe that's too big of a goal, right? Maybe you're like, okay, the first place I want to keep score is I want to keep score on how many times I eat out. And if I can eat out less than five times a week, I consider it a win, right? Well, Track it for a week. If you eat out six times, you don't get a point. You get a point if you eat out five or less times, right? Or maybe, it, you know, you give yourself a point every time you just talk yourself out of eating, eating out, right? Maybe you're like, okay, well, I don't want to just track it as a week. I want to talk to myself every single time because I know if I can tell myself no, I deserve a point because that's really hard to do. That brain inside of me, it wants me to eat out. I want to eat at home. It's a constant battle. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is real life. Like, you know it. You know it. You're in the kitchen. You got the pots and the pans, and you hear the clangity clang, and you're like, oh, I'm about to eat out, or, I, or you're about, I'm, about to, I'm about to cook at home. And then you, you start getting it going. You're like, oh, this would be so much easier if I just went and ate out. And somehow that brain just talks you into putting the pans away, hopping in the car. It's like the car drives itself. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy the magic. I'm telling you. <laughs> the brain is magical. But anyways... Give yourself a point if you if you go back to the pans and you you get out of the car, you uncrank it and you go back in there and you start cooking. Give yourself a point. Give yourself two. I don't know, but keep score. Keep score how many times you do something that is totally out of your norm. Keep score. Those little small wins will make you feel so good. You will be so thankful. If maybe maybe your small win is to intentionally save before spending right? Give yourself a point. Every time you make that transfer, you get paid, you instantly transfer out money to your savings. Give yourself a point. You saved before spending, which is most people don't do. Give yourself a point for that. Maybe another small win. You no longer want to spend spontaneously. Give yourself a point. Every time you tell yourself, no, you pick it up, you look at it, you're like, oh, this would be so cute. And then you put it back. Give yourself a point. All I'm saying is, Give yourself points. Look for these small wins in your life and be thankful. Be thankful for those small little wins that you have because those add up to that huge financial goal that you think is impossible. Give yourself a point. Keep score. Now, the third thing, we have to change your perspective. We've got to change your perspective. I want you to know that this is something that many lose track of with their personal finances. They get dragged in this perspective of, of that you have to live this life without luxuries. This could be that you have to tell your friends no. They're like, hey, we're all going on vacation and we want you to come. And you have to be like, nah, I can't go. I've got this $30,000 in debt I'm trying to pay off. I can't go. That's tough, right? Like, that's tough. Or maybe, maybe your friend calls and like, hey, we're throwing this huge birthday party and we want you to be there. And you're like, I, I can't, I can't make it. Like I got, I've got this, this medical bill I'm still trying to pay off. That's tough. It's tough to do. But let me tell you something. If you'll change your perspective and you'll say, you know what? I might, I might not be able to make it to this one. 
I might not be able to go on that vacation. All of those decisions are what make you stand out amongst everybody else because everyone else is going to give in. Everyone else is going to that birthday party. Everyone else is going on that vacation. They're not saying no. They're just, their $30,000 in debt is now $31 or $32,000 in debt, right? That's that their their thousand dollar medical bill is now an eleven hundred dollar medical bill. You see what I'm saying? Like they go further in debt for those small luxuries, those small luxuries. And we got to change the perspective. I want you to look at yourself and change your perspective on how you're looking at your situation. Because the thing is, is that if you will realize that the that where you are right now, if you make some of these financial decisions that are extremely hard, I got it. They're extremely hard to tell your friends no. They're extremely hard to tell your family no. They're extremely hard to do these things. What I can tell you is next year, how things look right now, you, you'll be at that birthday next year. You'll be at that vacation next year because you said no right now. You gave up the right now gratification, the right now luxury to be thankful, not next year's birthday or not only next year's birthday, but the next year and the next year and next year. You'll never miss another birthday. You'll never miss another vacation because you changed your perspective and said, I'm not going to think about the right now only. I'm going to think about the right now and as bad as it hurts, I know that where I'm going to be next year is not even close to where I'm at right now. And that's the perspective you have to look at. You're giving things up and it's not fun. And I got it. It's not fun. But think about how much you're going to learn. And let me tell you, if your friends are not accepting of the fact that you just can't, that you don't want to go further in debt because you're missing this vacation, it's not about them, right? If your friends can't accept that, maybe we got we got to talk to your friends, my friend, <laughs> I'll be your friend because I would accept it. Like, and that's not just me just being a friend. Like, if someone told me I can't afford it, first off, I would look and say, you know what? Uh, maybe we just change the trip. I, you're my friend. I want to change the trip so that you can be a part of it, right? I can't afford for you to pay for your your route, but maybe we change the trip. Maybe we do something more local so that I may, maybe I can help out, right? So that you can be a part of this. I don't know what it is, but what I'm saying is. Don't let outside influences, don't let other things and other people drive you further in debt. Just change your perspective. Look at it as the bigger picture is I am going to be where I want to be financially. And the perspective of right now is going to try to change me. But the perspective of tomorrow and next year and the next year, that's what I want to focus on. If you see this picture, it's funny. Uh, if you're listening to this on a podcast, I want to describe it. There's a guy and he's standing on this island, right? And he looks out off in the distance in the ocean and there's a guy in a boat and he's yelling out. He's like, boat. Yeah, there's a boat coming, right? Because he's been stuck on this island. And then you got this guy in the boat and he's he's so happy too because he looks and he's like, land, there's land over there. And it's 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 this, it's this funny little thing because... You know, like one's super happy because he's been stuck on an island and he finally sees a boat. The other guy is been stuck in a boat and he finally sees land. And this perspectives, it's all about perspective. And if you will change yours and look at your tomorrow, look at your next month, look at your next year, it makes the decisions today a little bit easier. So to wrap this up, I want you to, to start to feel this sense of thankfulness. I want you to not look at your situation, not look at your financial situation and and think of it as as being bad, right? Because to be honest with you, feeling ungrateful or not thankful for your current financial situation is extremely common. So many people are not happy with where they are financially. So many people when they're going through the hardest parts of personal finances, they can start to feel discouraged, right? The important part is to recognize that how you feel is normal. It's absolutely normal. And you've got these three ways now that you can get back on track. When you start to feel unthankful, when you start to feel that you're just not so gratified with, with your current finances, go back to these three things. Track your progress, keep score, change your perspective. It'll truthfully pull you out of whatever funk you're in. 
on this Thanksgiving weekend, November 2022, I want you to remember that being thankful for your family and friends is extremely important. Those are extremely important and should never be uh, become a, a second thought in your mind. But don't forget to be thankful for all the hard work that you're doing in your own life. That could be financial. That could be for your health. That could be for your work. That could be for whatever you fill in the blank with. Don't forget about all the hard work that you're putting into your own life because that is an influence on your friends and family, right? You are an influence on your friends and family and your personal finances shouldn't go unnoticed. All those little steps that you're taking, those should not go unnoticed. There's so much that you have to be thankful for. And I rest assured that, that you will, will figure out how to utilize these three ways so that you can stay thankful for yours. And I will assure you this, if you'll stay thankful for your finances, you will keep yourself in that mindset, in that perspective that you need to win with finances. Now, if you need a little extra help, if you need a little support, getting you to where you want to be financially, please feel free to reach out. All you have to do is head over to thefinancialmirror.org, hit book now in the middle of the screen, schedule a free consultation. Let's sit down, let's have a meeting together, and let's talk about how a financial coach may be what puts you over that edge, which gets you to that next spot to know that that your finances are headed in the right direction. If you do want to give an extra dose of support to the stream, head over to thefinancialmirror.org forward slash shop, pick you up some awesome financial mirror gear. All, all proceeds from that go right back into the stream just to improve every single part of it. Uh, I, I truly appreciate all of the, the support all of the the encouragement, all of the comments, all of the subscriptions, the likes, the five star reviews, the written comments, everything is so beneficial to continue to drive what I feel is 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 almost like a, an obligation just to help people, you know, because because whenever you have a a a story, a financial story, uh, you just want to share it, right? You just want to help other people that may be struggling the same way. So, you know, it, it's just one of those things that, that I want to continue to take a message and drive to help people be successful financially. And this podcast, this stream is how I do that. So I hope that once again, you had a great Thanksgiving, that you have a great holiday season as we move into the Christmas holiday season now. And I appreciate everyone that is continuing to listen to this. I am thankful for every new listener that I get here at the Financial Mirror. I am thankful for every client that I've worked with. I am thankful for every single person that has reached out and said that that what that the message that they heard has helped them financially. I am thankful to see more and more people grow financially. It's something that is is extremely uh that I have to continue to be thankful for, right? Because it's it's is truthfully a, a a gratifying moment to watch people have that that smile on their face that wasn't there the first time you met. So uh, continue to be thankful for your own journey. Continue to be thankful for your personal finances and, and continue to improve the one thing you can control yourself. Peace. Well, that wraps up today's Financial Mirror. Join us next week as we continue to work on ourselves change our mentality and to commit to achieving the success we always envisioned regardless of your platform help us grow as a community please like subscribe and share with the people in your lives